I want to talk about the decisions. Not the cracked hands. And so many people, man, I've worked with over the years. That's all they do. They talk about their cracked hands in life. That's all they talk about. The hands that they should have won. Yet a weaker hand beat them. And they can't move on. You'll never win again. Until you start questioning your decisions. Instead of complaining about the cracked hands. All right, TSL, let's get it. Welcome back or welcome to another edition of The Sales Life. If this is your 550th time of being here, man, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, well, welcome too. We got a seat for you, man. And The Sales Life is just not for those in the sales profession. It's for those who are building the life skills of selling through the eight C's, man. The eight C's, some of them are communication, connection, curiosity, creativity, continuous learning, coachability, consistency, and being able to handle the criticism. See, those are the eight C's, man, that you need to not only thrive in sales, man, in the profession, but also uh, thrive through life. Um, that's why we call it the sales life, man. And so um, let's rock out with today's episode, man, episode 550. And it comes from, um, I was uh, from Jordan Harbinger's uh, podcast. Got a great podcast. I urge you to subscribe to it. And on there, man, he had a uh, professional poker player, Maria Konnikova. Um, now, I started listening to the episode because I thought it was the tennis player. Um, but as I, and I, as I was listening to it, I'm like, man, I didn't know she moved from tennis to being a poker player. But I think that was like Anna Kornikova or Konnikova or something like that. So that's why I started listening to the podcast to begin with. But it was a really good episode. And there toward the end, man... Uh, Maria was talking about the poker player, not the tennis player. She was, uh, she was talking about um, how she was set up to win her first tournament, man. She made it to the final table. By all accounts, man, she, she one more hand. And she was going to win the whole thing. First tournament cash. And so she was all chips in. Last hand. And it didn't work out. She lost the hand and she lost the tournament. And dude, she was devastated, absolutely devastated. And as she was recounting the loss, she was talking to her coach, um, Eric, and was telling him all about it. And he cut her off. He said, wait a minute, do you, do you have a question um, about any of your hands? She's like, no, Eric, I'm just trying to tell you, you know, as far as, you know, what happened? He said, I don't care about that. He said, I don't care whether you win or lose. He said, what I do care about are the decisions that you made along the way. He said, because as long as you're with me, you are not going to be one of those guys who all they do is they talk about their cracked hands. And cracked hands in poker terms means that you beat a starting hand that's stronger than yours. And see, by all accounts, Konnikova, she had the winning hand. She had the stronger hand. I mean, she was all chips in. And somebody with an inferior hand beat her. And Eric told her, he said, the results are just noise. And you'll get pulled down by the noise. He said, or instead, what we'll do is, is we'll analyze the hands. What were the decisions that led to the outcome? He said, because if, if all you do is you, you talk about the hand that got cracked, that, that got cracked, it's like you're putting trash, your trash on someone else's lawn. And he said, you're not going to be one of those players. And how many times, you know, hearing that, man, I was like, how many times... Have all the only thing that you've ever talked about is your cracked hand. And just like that poker player, man, where you had the stronger hand in life, I mean, dude, you were supposed to land that account. That repeat customer was supposed to buy from you. The customer that was all set up was supposed to buy from you. You were supposed to get the loan. You guys were supposed to be together forever. 
and damn it, you were supposed to get that promotion. And your hand got cracked by someone who had a weaker hand than you. And they beat you. The outcome, man, is just noise. And you're complaining about the noise instead of questioning your decisions that led to the outcome. Where do I miss it? Because, see, the noise makes you a victim. It does. When all you're doing is you're talking about when you got cracked, all you are, it's just victim speech. It's a weaker speech. That's all you're doing is you're talking about. But if instead you analyze the decisions along the way, well, that's what keeps you playing the game. That's what makes you show up for another game. See, when you win, you rejoice, right? All you're doing is rejoice. And when you lose, all you do is complain. But rarely do you ever question. And dude, I've had many of those almost deals, man. I've had so many of them where they were set up. They were supposed to buy my offer from me. It was a sure win. It's a no-brainer. And I've had old customers who I've been the winning hand for years. You're always supposed to. Every time, every year, you've come back for me. When your friends and family need something, they come back for me. When you needed something at 9 o'clock at night, you came back for me. I was your winning hand. And got cracked. My repeat customers bought somewhere else. The customers I had now were supposed to buy. They even nodded their head. And then at the last second, no deal. How much time do you spend complaining versus analyzing, questioning the decisions as you played your hand? And so what you've got to learn to do, man, you've got to learn to disassociate yourself from the noise, from the outcome, and start questioning your decisions, dude, along the way. And if you do that, man, you're going to start playing better. Will your hands get cracked? Yes. But because you're always looking at those decisions, you're always analyzing your decisions, not the outcomes, it's going to keep you perpetual. It's going to keep you playing the game. It's going to keep you out of that victim mindset. Because, see, when you play the victim, man, you feel like you have no control. I had no control, man. I didn't, you know, it's no fair. People had it out for me. The managers wouldn't help me. Whatever the case may be, the world's working against me. But when you analyze my decisions, those are things that I can control. Then I'll keep playing consistently better hands. Even though I'm going to lose from time to time. The winning and the losing, dude, is just noise. Because see, when I start analyzing my hand, my play, maybe I assume too much. Maybe because they were a previous customer, you didn't treat them like you would a new customer. A new customer, you're very in tune. A new customer, you're asking deep questions. You're trying to get a grasp on the situation. And because they bought from you for many, many years, maybe you took that for granted and you did not treat them like a new customer. You should treat all of your old customers like a new customer. Because it is, dude, it's a new situation. Maybe you pull back out of fear. You had a thought, you had an idea, but you pulled back. I've done that many times. Or maybe you had an additional concession to offer. Yeah, you didn't do it because you said, ah, they're not going to buy anyway. I mean, dude, if you're an athlete, maybe your footwork, analyze that. Maybe your footwork was wrong. What was the decision? Why did you choose to go this way, not that way? And don't, you know, don't sit there and say, well, this person missed his block. You know, had he got the block, I would have sprung open. No, no, no. What were your decisions along the way? Don't say, had coach put this player in, we could have won the game. No. The winning and the losing is just noise. 
What were your decisions along the way? If you're a business owner, man, where did you deviate from the norm? Where did you relax? When did you not follow up? You had to have that account, yet you deviated, you did something different. Look at your decisions, not the outcome. The decisions, as you analyze them, will take care of the outcomes in more ways than one. This has helped me, dude. This analogy has helped me get, you know, so many times, man, you, you define yourself, especially in sales, you define yourself based on the result. And, you know, if a customer doesn't buy the products from me, I define myself on the cracked hand versus instead, if I disassociate from the result and I only look at, I analyze my hand, my play. Maybe I was too relaxed. Maybe I didn't inform enough. Maybe I was too informative. Maybe I bought it and sold it. Maybe I judged the customer before they even came in. See, those are things I can control. Those are things I can analyze. So that way, I stay out of the complaining. And all I'm doing is I'm questioning, I'm analyzing, and I'm setting up the next hand. I want to talk about the decisions, not the cracked hands. And so many people, man, I've worked with over the years, it's all they do. They talk about their cracked hands in life. It's all they talk about. The hands that they should have won, yet a weaker hand beat them. And they can't move on. You'll never win again until you start questioning your decisions instead of complaining about the cracked hands. So I want to hear from you, man. Do you find that you talk a lot about your cracked hands? And what will you do differently to start analyzing your decisions that led to the outcome? Not the outcome. What were your decisions along the way? It's a great analogy from Maria Konnikova, the poker player, not the tennis player. And special thanks to Jordan Harbinger also for having her on the show. I want to hear from you, man. 337-565-0906 is, you can text me. 337-565-0906. If you found value in today's episode, man, please hit the share button or tag someone who needs to hear this episode. Also hit the like. Um, and uh, that way you can help promote the show uh, there as well. Be sure and subscribe to The Sales Life on iTunes and Spotify. That way you can learn on the go if you don't want people looking over your shoulder looking at your screen also. So thanks for tuning in. Five days a week we're here with The Sales Life. On the sixth and seventh day of the week, it's The Sales Life on Sales, which is strictly sales related, and also The Sales Life Junior uh, on Sunday, which are for geared more toward younger people who need to be need to have some some facts man need to have some some heads up uh tune ins man so that way they can make better decisions moving forward as they move into senior moments in their life where they're actually having to make some of those senior decisions standing out standing up on their own so remember never settle keep selling your way through life no matter what hey you've reached the end of this episode but you have not reached the end of the sales life stay tuned i got another one queued up just for you